guarantees just like kind of, kind of concentration and just the, the, how these things uh, behave with the I guess success error a successful a failure probability and the mm -hmm. error so is there concentration concentration kind of thing yeah it's yeah it's kind of concentration kind of thing but, okay is yeah, it yeah, somewhere yeah. on the slide or no yeah. it's not on slide okay, okay. omit all the <laughs> okay. all the details and calculation but we want to discuss we can and the point mm -hmm. here is that you get it has to be low low rank and kind of have some bad dependence on on the rank if it's like poly it's yeah. like pretty okay pretty i guess uh, yeah so it's a uh, poly on rank so if you want in more detail it's it's actually not rank uh, it's actually forbidden snow so i need to have the need to have matrix with small forbidden snow so we are a little stronger see, than low rank yeah I see, I see. But for a poly matrix, it's like super big and has a very big rank. Poly, yeah, poly matrix is a bigger rank. I'm not going to. Yeah. So, yeah, so somewhere along this, I should have all the concentration work. <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions? No. Okay, so let's conclude our morning session. Thank you. Yeah, oh, so yeah, right now is the lunch time. Okay, yeah, please find the lunch box outside and come back by 1.30, yeah, 1.30. Quantum science and technology, yeah, it's spiritual, it's, some, it's kind of a pursuit for our perfection. Uh, you want to push everything to the uh, perfect. Uh, and I will use uh, quantum memory as an example. Uh, uh, here is my outline. Uh, I will, first, I will introduce uh, what is uh, optical quantum memory. And then uh, I will tell you uh, our previous work on uh, efficient uh, coherent optical memory based on electromagnetic induced transparency. Uh, and then we push uh, the memory towards broadband uh, recently. And then I will tell you our development of quantum light source uh, in order to realize the quantum memory. And, and then uh, I will tell you our recent results on uh, efficient quantum memory for uh, single photons and, and polarization qubits. Uh, for interested audience, uh, if you want to know more about the detail, you can uh, refer to this uh, reference. Uh, and so what is optical quantum memory? It's basically, it's a, a, a device uh, that can convert the photonic qubits uh, into stationary atomic system uh, and then retrieve on demand uh, sometime later. So it's kind of a uh, uh, postpone the collapse of wave function uh, uh, for quantum memory. Uh. And what can we use uh, for this uh, quantum memory? Basically, you can synchronize uh, probabilistic events. Uh, uh, for example, uh, in this uh, uh, proposal, uh, uh, like in uh, Professor Pan Jianwei's experiment, uh, they can generate maybe 10 or 12 entangled photon. But they always use the uh, parametric down conversion process and use a pump laser to pump many crystal. And so the time uh, all the photons uh, gener are generated simultaneously, its probability is low. So if you have a uh, quantum memory, uh, you can store it uh, and then uh, retrieve uh, all at once, uh, such that you can uh, increase the, the, the uh, uh, multi photon generation rate. Uh, this is one application of quantum memory. And another application is uh, uh, in the so called optical uh, uh, quantum repeater. Uh, so, in the current uh, quantum key distribution, uh, uh, people use the single photon uh, to, uh, uh, to generate uh, entanglement, to distribute entanglement. Uh, and due to the uh, non coronary theorem, uh, uh, it it uh, uh, guarantee the uh, security uh, of uh, QKD. However, uh, it you use a single photon, so a photon is lost, is lost. Uh, so uh, you cannot uh, amplify it or uh, make a copy. So uh, the for the loss, a photon loss in fiber become a serious problem. Uh, uh, here are some value uh, with a typical. Uh, Telecom fiber, uh, uh, you can only detect uh, one photon per 30, 300 years. Uh, 
uh, in the intercontinental distance. Uh, uh, that's almost impossible. So uh, there are some people they uh, uh, propose this so-called repeater uh, uh, scheme. Uh, basically, uh, you uh, cut the uh, propagation distance into a, a many pieces, and then you have some uh, quantum memory. Uh, of, sorry. Okay, maybe I, I, I just use my hand. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Okay, uh, uh, so you cut the uh, distance into a many uh, section and, and then you generate uh, the entanglement uh, for, for shorter distance and then you, uh, uh, you, you take a, a so-called bare measurement on these two uh, uh, me memory and then the A and D will be entangled and do, that's doing similar things and A and Z uh, can be entangled uh, and because the propagation distance becomes shorter uh, so uh, that can uh, uh, allow you to have a hi uh, higher uh, entanglement distribution rate and uh, there are some protocol on, uh, many protocol for quantum repeaters uh, and Based on some theoretical study, uh, uh, increase of 1% uh, in memory efficiency will decrease the entanglement distribution time by about uh, maybe around 10 to 18%. So high memory efficiency is crucial uh, in, in the implementation of quantum memory. It's not working well. trouble <laughs> okay maybe it's not good enough. okay okay so there are many performance parameters uh, to evaluate a quantum memory uh, such as uh, fidelity uh, uh, basically, it's major how well the quantum state remains, or noise level, uh, or storage time, or bandwidth, or efficiency. In my research, we focus more on efficiency first, and then uh, very soon we uh, emphasize the bandwidth. Uh, and we use the so-called uh, electromagnetic induced transparency mechanism uh, to implement the quantum memory. And just in case uh, you don't know EIT, uh, it's a three levels uh, system. Uh, the presence of a control field can uh, render the, uh, the probe become transparent. Uh, and it's a mechanism is uh, based on the so-called dark state. Uh, and uh, due to uh, a company to this EID phenomena, the uh, dispersion relation, uh, it, it, it's a, a slope is very uh, sharp. Uh, such that when the pro pulse uh, come into the EIT media, it, it will be compressed spatially. And its velocity, group velocity will be significantly uh, reduced. Uh, this is called so-called slow light effect. Uh, here uh, is an example. Uh, so in, in the experiment, you have uh, about one centimeter long uh, uh, in, in the sample. And the group delay time is around uh, 10 microseconds. In this case, the group velocity is about uh, one kilometer per second. And uh, around 2000, uh, Professor Fershauber and Lucan, they uh, proposed that you can use this EIT media as a quantum memory. And they identified that the slow light can be understood as a coherent superposition between up, uh, optical profile and, and the ground collective atomic coherence. And their group velocity is exactly, uh, their propagation velocity is exactly the group velocity of slow light. And the most important of all is that uh, the field or the atomic coherence uh, can be tuned by the, the intensity of a control field. So when you turn off the control field, uh, the, the, the light can convert it to collective atomic coherence. And then when you can turn on control field again, uh, the collective atomic coherence can be converted to, to optical field again. Uh, and 
this works for any kind of content light. Uh, so so uh, this is so-called the dark state polar polariton, uh, which can be utilized as a optical quantum memory. And uh, here are some background knowledge. We want to uh, push uh, the uh, efficiency. Uh, and you can do by solving the a couple of Maxwell Plaha equation, uh, you can get this uh, a nice result. The efficiency of a, a propulse uh, is just follow uh, just follow this uh, simple uh, formula. Uh, here, uh, the, uh, this term is related to the uh, loss due to the finite ground state uh, decoherence rate, the, the small gamma, and and this term is related to the uh, finite EIT bandwidth. Uh, the idea is very simple. This is the EIT transparent. Uh, uh, spectrum, uh, and here is your the spectrum your, your optical propulse, and if your ground state decoherence state is finite, then uh, the the then transmi transmission will not be uh, to the one hundred percent, and uh, if there is a finite uh, uh, spectral bandwidth, uh, the propulse will experience some a little bit absorption. However, uh, there is another consideration. When you want to store almost the whole propulse uh, into the media, uh, you, need, you need to keep the group data time uh, small enough uh, uh, to some, uh, the group, group data time to the propulse uh, duration uh, to a certain uh, uh, effect uh, value, uh, such that almost the whole propulse will be compressed into the media to minimize the leakage loss. So based on these uh, three uh, relations, uh, you can obtain uh, the high storage efficiency. If we uh, plot that formula uh, uh, in, uh, versus optical depths uh, and, and uh, the, the storage efficiency versus optical depths. Optical depth is an uh, important factor. It's uh, pro proportional to the atom density times sample length times, times absorption cross section. And eventually, uh, there are two uh, parameters that are very crucial to obtain high efficiency, uh, the high optical depth and uh, low ground state decoherence. And experimentally, you also need to uh, have a high control intensity when you increase the optical depth. Uh, and so you can see the efficiency uh, uh, goes higher for higher optical depth, although the slope becomes uh, quite slow. Uh, here is the typical uh, setup to uh, to implement an uh, experiment. We use a uh, elongated uh, magneto optical thread, which has a, a sample length on the order of uh, 1.4 centimeter. And for many years, we have uh, pushed our system to get very high optical depths and a very small decoherence rate. Uh, we can reach to uh, over almost 100. Uh, and, and you can see it's a very nice EIT, EIT spectrum. Uh, And uh, based on uh, that uh, result, we can obtain a very high uh, storage efficiency. Here shows uh, the input propulse, the slope, light pulse, and store and retrieval. And uh, the storage efficiency, we can uh, get up to uh, 92%. Uh, and you can see, we use uh, CSIM D1 and D2 to implement this um, uh, EIT memory. And, the, the behavior are quite different. Uh, for D2 light, uh, at the high up to this, the efficiency actually goes down. I will talk about that more later. And, and up to date, uh, it, this is the highest efficiency among all kinds of uh, protocol uh, for EIT, uh, for uh, optical memory. Uh, here shows the efficiency versus uh, the storage time. Uh, and as you can see, uh, Professor Yu, uh, uh, they get the 78, which is, uh, I think this, this point, uh, uh, around uh, two, two, uh, 213. And the Australia group, uh, Professor Pinkao Lan, uh, they got 87%. Uh, our storage time is not very long, uh, but uh, it's the highest efficiency. And, uh, I just show you that uh, D1 and D2 uh, system, uh, the behavior are quite different. 
Originally, we used the D2, uh, CSIM D2 line to implement the EIT uh, memory. However, uh, 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 it, the performance was not so good. Uh, and that's because the, there's a nearby transition. Uh, the control figure were, uh, of resonant excite uh, to the nearby transition. And in the deuce, uh, uh, there's some spontaneous decay. Uh, and effectively, uh, with higher optical, uh, with stronger uh, control field, the, the coherence rate will degrade, uh, such that you see the efficiency goes down again at a very high optical depth. Uh, and uh, then we switch to the uh, CCMT1 line, and, and also we prepare population uh, to uh, uh, write most of the GMAN sub-level, and such that it's behavior like almost the perfect three-level system. Uh, and you can see the, the EIT spectrum uh, looks very nice. And Actually, there are uh, more uh, complications than that. Uh, at a very high optical test, a very strong control field, you need to worry about another uh, nonlinear optics effect, such as a four way mixing. Uh, although this is a three level system, system but the control field might of resonate excite the pro transition and introduce the so called uh, four way mixing, uh, which can induce a pro gain. However, uh, there is no free lunch. Uh, uh, again, always introduce uh, common noise. Uh, and the Professor Fresh Harvard did some uh, his, uh, theoretical study, and 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 we we, we actually uh, also studied that experimentally. Uh, and however, you can reduce uh, the four-way mixing by uh, uh, breaking the phase matching condition. Uh, and so, yeah. So there is a. Uh, a method to overcome this problem. Uh, okay, and so uh, so we can reach a very high efficiency. And recently, we were trying to push uh, the memory bandwidth to a higher bandwidth. Previously, we only have like a two megahertz bandwidth. And we uh, conduct a theoretical and experimental study to uh, study how, what are the requirements to reach a high bandwidth. Uh, and eventually, it's the same, uh, you know, condition. You need to very, very have have a very high optical depth and a very strong control field uh, to achieve a high bandwidth. Uh, at this moment, we can uh, push our memory bandwidth to uh, uh, to about thirty one megahertz, and, and below 15, 15 megahertz, we can uh, reach efficiency more than eighty percent. Uh, uh, about that uh, bandwidth, we, we are limited by our available control fee. Uh, we need a higher, even higher power. Uh, okay, and all previous work are based on uh, the coherent uh, weak classical light uh, only. Uh, in order to, to implement the quantum memory, we need to have a quantum light source. So, so we follow uh, Professor Harris and, and Chu Zhi Song uh, to uh, Build a cavity enhanced spontaneous parametric down conversion at the photon pair source. And uh, there's a special feature of our uh, uh, scheme. Uh, we, could, we actually switch uh, the pump laser over a high power and a low power. And such that at high power, it's an optical parametric accelerator or laser, laser mode. And at low power, it becomes a, a photon pair mode. So uh, we can enjoy. Uh, very easy alignment, uh, just just like a, a typical laser. But we can uh, we can play with uh, the single photon experiment, uh, uh, and so we can actually tune the, its wavelength to atomic transition, and we can actually lock its frequency, uh, and then we uh, we make sure it's a single longitudinal mode uh, because many uh, photon pair source they are uh, multi uh, mode. Uh, and only a certain few percentage of the light is uh, is resonant with atomic transition. But for our source, it's uh, uh, they are all in the single longitudinal mode, uh, and we check that it's a uh, uh, non-classical property uh, is very good. Uh, it's a uh, uh, violate the the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality uh, at a low pump power, uh. and. The bandwidth uh, was like uh, uh, 6.6 megahertz. It's uh, still a little bit larger than the natural noise of CCN transition. Uh, very recently, we built another uh, new photon source at the CCN D1 line. 
and its bandwidth is uh, about 2.2 megahertz, which is already uh, be below the uh, natural light waves. Uh. And then, so we uh, implement the, we combine this uh, photon source with a uh, core atom system uh, and, and uh, to implement the quantum memory. Uh. And here shows the, uh, some uh, typical data. So uh, uh, you uh, trigger on the Herat, uh, on the uh, idle photon, and then you shoot your signal photon into memory and, and store it. And when we retrieve, uh, uh, it's stored for a, a few uh, time, a certain period, and then we turn on the control figure. However, the, the intensity of control figure can be tuned. And so the single photon waveform uh, or bandwidth uh, can be uh, manipulated. Uh, and here shows uh, the storage efficiency versus uh, the reach, uh, write, read to write uh, uh, control power ratio. Uh, and the efficiency uh, goes down at a, a really high uh, control intensity uh, due to the, the of resonant excitation. Uh, and here shows the photon bandwidth versus uh, that control, uh, read to write control ratio, uh, which show you that uh, the, the single photon bandwidth can be manipulated. Uh, we only uh, reach to a 35% uh, efficiency for CCMD2 line uh, because uh, the of resonant uh, uh, excitation effect. Also because the bandwidth of our single photon at that time was not narrow enough. And uh, also the, the optical depth for this system uh, was not quite high uh, yet. Uh, and here shows the not, uh, normalized cross correlation function uh, versus read to write uh, con control power ratio. Uh, it goes up a little bit and then goes down. At a very high intensity, the, the, the of resonant excitation effect, the correlation rate becomes uh, big again uh, in the CCMT2 line. Uh, uh, however, uh, you, you, you actually gain a little bit uh, uh, non-classical correlation uh, around here. Uh. And recently, we switched to the uh, CCMD1 uh, line, uh, and we can uh, get a higher efficiency, about 70%. Uh, uh, the G2, uh, the cr uh, cross correlation function versus uh, that ratio uh, also goes up and saturates at some level, uh, uh, because uh, the control light uh, uh, my, has a certain leakage into your single bone detector. Uh, and, and limit your non-classical correlation function. Uh, and as you can see, the efficiency are around maybe uh, 70 to 80%. Uh. Although this is not the highest efficiency uh, for single photon storage, it's a, the highest for single photon storage based on uh, SPDC source, uh, light source. Uh. And with that result, we want to implement, uh, the, we want to encode the qubit. Uh, we use the polarization uh, degree of freedom. Uh, we use this so-called dual ray scheme. Uh, uh, basically, you, you uh, use uh, some bifurcated crystal uh, and uh, map the uh, maybe right circular, left circular polarization into the two spatial modes, and then shoot into the uh, atomic ensemble, and then uh, use the reverse process, uh, reverse setup, uh, and so you can store the polarization qubit. Uh, and we do the tomography, uh, polarization tomography, uh, with uh, maybe linear, horizontal, vertical, right, left, circular polarization. Uh, we do all uh, tomography. And the overall uh, fidelity uh, is ab about 96%. Uh, uh, the low data will be uh, affected by the, the noise. Uh, if you do the substra substraction, then the fidelity is a burden, uh, 96%. Uh. Okay, so here is uh, my, here are my conclusion. So we obtained uh, a very high optical test, uh, more than 1,000 and a very low decoherence rate. Uh. And then based on that, we obtained a uh, very high storage efficiency. And then we push memory bandwidth to about 30 megahertz. And then we develop a, a content light source based on SP, uh, SPDC mechanism. 
and we demonstrate uh, single photon storage with 36% uh, efficiency for D2 line and more than 70% for D1 line. And then we realized the uh, quantum memory for polarization qubits with a fidelity higher than 96%. Uh, okay, I want to thank uh, my collaborator, Professor Yu and Professor Chen Yongfan, uh, and all my previous uh, team members. Uh, thank you very much. So I have some simple questions on your dual rail experiments. So you shine uh, two laser beam with uh, two polarization. Yeah, actually it's one. Simultaneously. Yeah. Okay. And why, why, want to do, do, why you want to do that? Because uh, right and left circular polarize, they might have uh, experienced different transition type of moment. Uh, yes. And it will become imbalanced. And by doing this scheme, uh, uh, the different polarization will have separate into uh, specially. And then we put uh, one piece of uh, half, uh, maybe half or quarter wave plate. Yes. And they actually become the same polarization. Oh, okay. Uh, and then you do the uh, uh, reverse process. Oh, uh, I see. To merge that. So you don't sacrifice your optical depths uh, because they, they, they are all, uh, you use the same transition. Uh, okay. A time transition for those two light, uh, those two mode, yeah. Yes, okay. Yeah. okay. Oh, there's an online question. Online question, okay. <laughs> Is the light lifetime of the memory limited due to the angle of the control field required to break forward missing? Yeah, yes. Uh, you sacrifice the, uh, the storage time, yeah, because the storage is critical depending on the ready angle between uh, pro and control field. Uh, uh, yeah, you, you need to sacrifice that. Yeah. However, you even can cool your atom uh, more, and then you, you gain the storage time again. In, in our experiment, we don't emphasize too much on the storage time yet. Uh, we it's a uh, it's, it's on the order of uh, 100 microseconds uh, due to the pro, uh, the fly away time of the mud because we, that, during the storage, we didn't uh, trap the atom. But some people like uh, Professor Kuzmich, they use optical uh, dipole trap or lattice. And so they can extend the storage time to like uh, 10 seconds uh, or even more, yeah. And in the, in the end, uh, this actually highlights one issue. In the end, you need to uh, get a good performance on all parameters. So far, there is no any group that can meet this requirement. Uh, you want to high fidelity, high storage, long storage time, and high efficiency, high bandwidth. Yeah. Yeah, so is it going to begin? Okay, so in terms of quantum memory, you know, they will need to satisfy or with some kind of quantum inter interference. So it means the, the phase of the uh, the input field should be important. But on the other hand, you are talking about the storage and retrieval of single photon. So it means you, yeah, you, the, the phase information of the single photons input uh, is totally unknown. So is there any, some kind of trail of balance or some kind of limit for, for such kind of quantum memory with single photon? Okay, you are talking about a phase of single photon. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> uh, yeah, I, I think that because it's based on uh, SPTG process, the phase of the single photons, they are random, yeah. Uh, there, there's a, some theoretical, stu theoretical study showing that the EIT storage uh, doesn't depend on the rate that on the phase too much, the, the phase between uh, your profile and your control field. The phase is not crucial for storage, yeah. I, I, I can show you that, <laughs> that paper, yeah. But 
following questions, uh, what, what should be the limitation for the efficiency of the, of the usual yeah. for yeah. photon? I guess uh, I think ideally there is no limit. You just need to uh, uh, find a, a, a maybe artificial atom system that mimic ideal three level system and you get a very high optical depth. I, I believe there's no uh, theoretical limit, but uh, in real atom, they always has some practical limit, like uh, there are some nearby transition. And yeah, I, I think there is no theoretical limit. It's just uh, how ideal the atom can be. Yeah. Uh, actually, Professor Yu uh, recently, they got 95% uh, efficiency. Uh, it's a new record, yeah. Uh, yeah, it, 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 they use the same uh, media to generate photon pairs and then store into the same atomic media. They can get a 95% efficiency. Uh. However, uh, for real application, there are still some issue. This efficiency is, a, you know, it's an intrinsic efficiency. In a real application, you need to take care of all technical, like uh, fiber coupling laws, uh, etalon laws. Uh, there are a lot of laws. So take our result as an example. The, the real efficiency for coherent light, uh, the classical light is like uh, maybe 25% or 20%. For our single photon experiment, uh, the first one is only like 5% overall efficiency. Although the intrinsic efficiency is high, uh, but we, normalize all the technical laws. Uh, and in a real application, you need to take care of absolute efficiency. That's why it's uh, almost hopeless. Uh. Any more question? Yes? But intrinsic efficiency depends on the uh, optical depth and the coherence rate on the atomic media only. I mean, you, uh, you, you get rid of all technical laws during the pace. Uh, you, you have a MIDI without a MIDI and with the MIDI, uh, the ratio is the, the intrinsic efficiency. But the absolute efficiency, you might, you might couple the light to the fiber, pass through some etalon field to figure out the control field. The overall, absolute efficiency can be low. Uh, but so our work just tell you, if you can get rid, you can find, someday you can find very high coupling efficiency for fiber, loss technique loss uh, can be minimized to, to zero, then the intrinsic efficiency is possible to get a near, uh, uh, like a unity. Uh, there's, yeah, but, but in a real application, you need to take care of, either intrinsic or in extrinsic laws. Uh, that's why it's difficult. <laughs> okay, yeah, the storage time, also, I, I don't think that has a fundamental limit. It's just, in our system, we didn't trap the atom during the storage time. So the atom will fly away. And somebody used the optical dipole trap to trap the atoms, even during the storage time. And, but there, the dipole trap will introduce some uh, inhomogeneous AC structure, but they use the so-called magic wave lens to cancel that. So they can uh, store for more than 10 seconds. Uh, if, you, if you use the Solid media uh, cool down to a very cryogenic temperature. There are some groups that can store for like uh, uh, one minute. And if you use a nuclear spin as your memory, uh, even one hour, uh, recently I see maybe 10 days in a China's group, uh, they use nuclear, uh, uh, nu nuclear spin to store uh, the, the, the information. The storage time can be very long. Yeah. So I, I don't think there is a fundamental limit. <laughs> it's just how, how much you pay uh, ever <laughs> or, or price uh, on that aspect, yeah. 
Okay, so let's uh, thank Dr. Chen again for his talk. Okay, so we'll move on to our next next talk. Uh, Dr. Ka Kachenko, right?